From second fiddle to first string. After years of taking a back seat, women are gaining first chairs in major orchestras. Marion Davies. Quote, Opinions vary as to when the recognized order of women clergy died out. All agree that it lingered longer in the East than in the West. It seems as if the decay of women's ministry took place with the decay of Christianity, the rise of the Roman apostasy, and the proud pretensions of an exclusive male only priesthood. End quote. The Magna Carta of Woman, page 93 and 94. The Rise of Papal Rome, Descent of Women to Slavery. Under the Levitical system, neither Gentiles, slaves, or women could be priests. This is reflected in rabbinical prayers well known in the first century. Quote, Praised be God that he has not created me a Gentile. Praised be God that he has not created me a woman. Praised be God that he has not created me a slave. End quote. Tosepta Berkoth. The priesthood of the Levitical law was one of the men only from the tribe of Levi. This law was changed, allowing Gentiles, slaves, and women to be in the priesthood. For Paul wrote, quote, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. End quote. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. Paul tells us in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 11 that the Levitical priesthood could not bring perfection. Quote, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of a necessity a change also of the law. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there ariseth another priest, Thou, Christ, art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. End quote. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 12, 14, 15, and 17. This, quote, new and living way, end quote, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20, which made all eligible for the priesthood, empowered the first woman New Testament prophet, Mary, Luke chapter 1, verse 28, 30, and 48 and the first woman apostle to the Jews, Mary Magdalene, John chapter 20, verses 16 and 17, of whom Jesus said to Simon, quote, My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed, priestly act, my feet with ointment, end quote. Luke chapter 7, verse 46, made women active in the ministry of Jesus, Luke chapter 8, verses 1 to 3, brought forth women witnesses on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and chapter 2, verse 4, inspired Priscilla to be a co-laborer with Paul, Romans chapter 16, verse 3, and a teacher of Apollos, Acts chapter 18, verse 26. Quote, there is also reference to women apostles in Romans chapter 16, verse 7. Paul writes, Salute Andronicus and Junia, who are of note among the apostles. Chrysostom and Theophylact, both Greeks, say Junia was a woman. Women's only century in the Christian church was during apostolic days, and a little while thereafter. Although there are records that there were women teachers and preachers during the first four centuries, Tertullian, one of the earliest Latin fathers, notes that women appear in every early reference to ecclesiastical orders. Four titles were applied to the women clergy, all of which occur in the New Testament. Widow, deaconess, presbyter, virgin. The two former are apostolic. End quote. Magna Carta of Woman. Quote. Romans chapter 16 verse 1. This is interesting because not one of the translations say what Paul said. Paul said, I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, a deacon in the church at Centria. There is no such Greek word as deaconess. The text simply says she was a deacon. The word diakonos appears 21 times in the writings of Paul in the New Testament. A literal translation for the word is servant. Although the King James Version is less chauvinistic than some other versions, this passage is one great exception. 
Only in reference to Phoebe does the King James translate Paul's word as servant. In Timothy chapter 3 verses 8 and 12, it is translated deacon. But in all other places, the King James uses the term minister. Only of Phoebe is Paul's word diakonos translated servant. Note. A good translator who tries to see what the original writer was saying will then express that as accurately as possible in the idiomatic language of the reader. It is at this point that the translator's preconceived ideas sometimes get in the way. In short, the Bible is uniquely inspired by the Holy Spirit, but the translators are not. Let the reader beware. Christianity Today, 1979 Regarding Paul's seeming command, let the women keep silent, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34, we need to remember that in the Greek manuscript there were no capital letters to words, no quotation marks, and no punctuation such as we have in our English versions of the Bible. That 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 34 and 35 contained a quotation of the Judaizers' words is confirmed when it is considered in detail. It is not permitted, says someone, for women to speak as also saith the law. Verse 34. But this cannot refer to the Old Testament scriptures, for there is not one trace from Genesis to Malachi of any such prohibition, nor is there a single word in the whole law of Moses dealing with the subject. The words, it is not permitted, and as also saith the law, must refer to some rule outside of Scripture. There is no other but the oral law of the Jews, appealed to by the Judaizers in the church in their efforts at that time to bring Christianity back within the confines of Judaism. The Talmud also taught that it was a shame for a woman to let her voice be heard among men. It is therefore clear that Paul was quoting what the Judaizers in the Corinthian church were saying. It was only when the teachings of the Jewish rabbis began to infiltrate the translations of the scriptures that the status of Christian women in the church was changed. This means that the Judaism which Paul the Apostle so successfully combated did eventually succeed in robbing the church of the active ministry of women. See Daniel 11 verse 37, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 2, and Jude verses 3 and 4. In the second century, three Greek versions of the Hebrew scriptures were made by Jews and Judaizers, with the express object of emphasizing the teaching of the Jews where they differed from Christianity. Following these, in the year 382, appeared the Latin Vulgate, translated by Jerome, who went to Palestine and studied Hebrew under the Jewish rabbis, imbibing naturally the rabbinical viewpoint of the original scriptures. Then came in the 4th century the tremendous change in the status of the church itself, when Constantine the Great took it under his protection. From this time on we have a gradual rise of an exclusive priesthood and an ecclesiastical system, the change of the Sabbath too, which has led men further and further away from the simplicity of the early days of Christianity. End quote. The Magna Carta of Woman Quote with the decline of the Roman Empire, pagan, sociological change to papal Rome set off a decline in the order of deaconesses, as reflected in the following council statements. Let no one proceed to the ordination of deaconesses any more. Council of Orange, A.D. 441. Canon 26. We abrogate completely in the entire kingdom the consecration of widows who are named deaconesses. Council of Ipeon, A.D. 517, Canon 21. No longer shall the blessing of women deaconesses be given because of the weakness of the sex. Council of Orleans 2, A.D. 533. By the 12th century, the order of deaconesses almost totally disappeared from the church, both east and west. End quote. Biblical Affirmation of Women, page 314 and 315. Quote, the abolition of deaconesses took place gradually between the 2nd and 6th centuries. There is evidence that some churches also ordained women presbytery or priests during these centuries. 
But the divisive blow to the ordination of women came with the triumph of a sacerdotal caste concept of the priesthood in the 4th century, when Constantine made the Christian church the official religion of the empire. The Christian ministry was established as a social caste and received the privileges traditionally reserved for the pagan priesthood. A cultic concept of worship shaped the ministry and liturgy into a new temple cultus. As a result, the Old Testament laws of cultic purity were revived and applied to the Christian priests, defining women as unclean and to be strictly excluded from the sanctuary. Canon laws of this time showed that the uncleanness of women was used as a chief reason for eliminating the office of deaconess. The growing ascetism of the church compounded these early sources of misogynism, hatred of women. Women were seen as the symbol of dangerous carnality. They should be segregated in church, veiled. They must not speak or learn except in the privacy of the cloister. The priesthood, in turn, was molded into a cultic caste, whose sacral purity is maintained by strict segregation from all that is female. The irrationality of some of the recent reactions to the ordination of women in the Episcopal Church reflects the unconscious persistence of this concept of a male sacral purity which is created by rigid demarcation of the sanctuary against the pollution of the female. This concept of women as both unclean and sexually threatening is reflected in Catholic canon law, where the laws referring to women have to do primarily with excluding them from the sanctuary and from personal contact with priests. End quote. New woman, new earth. Thus, gradually, another facet of Daniel's prophecy was fulfilled when he declared that, quote, he shall think to change times and laws, end quote, chapter 7, verse 25. Through Christ, Jew and Greek, free and bond, male and female, were eligible to be priests under the, quote, new and living way, end quote. But the man of sin, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2, fulfilled Daniel's, quote, think to change, end quote, and changed the new law of the priesthood of Melchizedek, Hebrews 7, in which all are eligible, no caste, back to the Levitical priesthood, in which only men were eligible. It is very significant that this gradual decline of the role of women in the early church directly parallels the gradual decline of the celebration of the seventh-day Sabbath. Progress Report in SDA E.G. White counseled that, quote, In the time of the end, every divine institution will be restored. End quote. Prophets and Kings, page 678. She stated that, quote, Women can be instruments of righteousness, rendering holy service. It was Mary who first preached a risen Jesus. If there were twenty women where now there is one, we would see many more converted to the truth. There are women who should labor in the gospel ministry. Christ speaks of women who helped him in presenting the truth before others. And Paul also speaks of women who labored with him in the gospel. End quote. Evangelism, page 472 and 475. Quote. Women who are willing should be set apart to this work by prayer and laying on of hands. End quote. Review and Herald, July 9, 1895. Quote. Spring Council of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, April 3, 1975, voted that the way be opened for women elected to serve as deaconesses in our church be ordained, that the greatest discretion and caution be exercised in the ordination of women in the office of local elder, that we recognize that the history of the Seventh-day Adventist Church provides precedence for women to all roles of leadership. However, in the matter of ordination of women to the gospel ministry, we believe that the world church is not yet ready to move forward. In 1979, the annual council approved another category for both ordained men and women in positions of responsibility. They now receive credentialed minister card. End quote. Pacific Union Recorder, October 18, 1982. Living Waters Branch, 
P.O. Box 4666, Waco, Texas, 76705.